Energy. I mean, as we mentioned, for TSM, not a ton on the line, but we do have to remember that Energy still can make a stab at that eighth place slot. So although not uh, getting out of the promotion tournament, <laughs> you laugh, but it's actually hugely important in terms of uh, who you play, right, in the promotion tournament. You mean if so, they take a game or if they win? No, if they, they, if win. they win this match, they will end up being in eighth no, place as opposed to... <laughs> you, I mean, you laugh all you want, but the importance of the actual match does not change, I mean, right? So for energy, there's something to play for here. Yeah. Uh, they do not get the victory in game one. Uh, in terms of breaking it down, we'll take a look at champions select, of course. Uh, the Vladimir coming in, Haunts are onto the Shen. A lot of champions that we've seen these guys play to a very high level throughout the split, and they execute fairly similarly uh, here today. The big change for me is, once again, Tarek more and more prevalent in the North American meta, and Biofrost played it quite well. Well, I think we're seeing a, a big change in TSM where they're putting a lot of their focus of CC and engage into the dueling. We saw them on Friday with the Ash Bard insta-lock, and now we see Ash Terex, so a lot of CC coming into from the bottom lane, which just opens up the map and the, the picks for Bjergsen and Hansa to be able to just pick whatever they want, and, and Svenskeren can get away with Nidalee on that. So it's really cool to see this little variation they had where in the beginning of the split they had Lucian mostly, Lucian Karma, so not a whole lot of CC, and now they've, they've adapted. Right, and I think it's interesting to note too that Nidalee is one of the most prevalent picks in the other regions. It's the most picked band for the majority of the season, but it was never really the biggest focus for NA. And I think moving forward, the fact that TSM does have this flexibility in their draft where he can get away with Nidalee picks very easily because what the rest of the team can pick, it's great for TSM. Yeah, very much so. If we jump into some of the gameplay itself, 5.30, very early on we saw kills uh, handed over in this game. Actually, both both series uh, on both streams had very early kills happening, but Energy going to pick up three kills here on this one. Right, it's a good invade for TSM, but they don't have any trinkets down, so they can't actually match the TP that Quas does. So he's, Quas sacks the top wave to force this fight and is able to get a monster double stun there, which leads to a chase down triple kill. And the invade itself, like I was saying, was what you want to use with Nidalee. And TSM's bot lane had pressure, but they just couldn't match TPs because no one put down a trinket ward. So it was a good idea with a little bit of a flubbed execution. Pretty much, and fighting Braum early on, even if you're Tarek, is still pretty tough. Right, but this is the thing now, right? How many times have we seen so far this split the better of the two teams get behind, as TSM did just here, but make a comeback, right? CLG, uh, you know, the second half of their uh, season has basically been that every game, right? Get behind, but come back and win. So our top tier teams are finding ways to get back into games against the lower tier teams when they establish uh, early advantages. Uh, some of the ways in which they do that, right? Finding their skirmishes later in the game, but primarily playing around uh, the global pressure, right? That's one thing that TSM does better than energy across the board. Well, playing a minion waves and just making sure that right. when you go for plays, it's what we've been covering for quite some time. You want to make the opponent make the best decision in like a 10 second time frame where you have to say, do you want to contest the objective or lose a wave? And as long as you can always push up the wave and have the opponent make that choice, you're almost always going to be in the right of whatever call that you're making. And that's what these top teams are really able to do. Yeah, TSM on your screens right now discussing game one and playing I Should spirits. we play team out? Is it time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably the whole debate right <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, but I do want to dive into a little bit more of the gameplay itself. 22-30 into the game. We've got a pretty extended mid lane fight here. Uh, going to be plenty of kills traded both ways. And the big thing here is like the Tarek ultimate just comes out with the Shen and they're trying to disengage so energy feels a little bit more confident in jumping in and Quas, don't do it. Okay. He, <laughs> he, like they just keep trying to chase but they don't have any way to actually get an engage going on this composition. The only actual CC is Braum and Vlad just can't die at this point and the Tarek is just so tanky. Vlad That's flashes out. That's fantastic by the way. And just keeping, got yeah, you gotta keep an eye on Hans just how much damage and CC he's able to dish out. He's just in the middle of the team trying to zone them off. He's keeping them from going on to Svenskeren. Nice little taunt to GBM and Bjergsen's Q. Just nice dodge there on me. Plus, 500, plus yeah. 532 heal. Come on. <laughs> it's a little, it's <laughs> What's a little going nuts. On? But then, I mean, this, I love this uh, this uh, part of the fight here, this little phase as Hanser just basically 1v4 lives forever. It's the raid boss. Yeah, I think it's crazy too the fact that like TSM didn't even really use their defensive abilities that well at the start of the fight. Like mm -hmm. the Shen ult and the Terra call came in and didn't really do anything. He has grasp right now. He almost gets the taunt yeah, off he gets and then the auto, yeah. which would have healed him. That could have been even more disastrous for energy. Bjergsen will clean up this final kill here onto OQ. Uh, but ultimately, once they, you know, with TSM, once they establish even an even game state, right? Once they you, you climb their way back to an even game state, it just feels very 
smooth for them. You look at the gold graph, they weren't even ever really that far behind, but it's a very steady incline. You know, in a lot of other yeah. games, we'll see really sharp jerks and jumps, but that's relatively steady. I just uh, giving a, a little taste of uh, what's it like to be on the other end of the spectrum. But yeah. one thing that, that I think is really cool about TSM that I've noticed from last split as well is the fact that their comps are almost always involving things that are really tough to kill. Mm -hmm. So you have Tarek, you have Shen, you have Vlad, you have Zillion, you have Kindred, you have Braum, Karma, just things that have a lot of movement speed and just a pain in the ass to deal with. Yeah, even Nidalee's tough yeah, to kill, it's just tough to catch. This seems yeah. to be like the TSM flavor, and like Echo before, it's just you know, not something that is enjoyable to play against. <laughs> no, no, not in the least. All right, well, jungle uh, jungle position here, Santorin's gonna pick up player of the game Wait, on so that Nidalee. Not Sven's Karen, not right. Santorin. I'm thinking old TSM <laughs> yeah, in my head. I was just like, oh yeah. Well, he did. He did beat up on Santorin for a lot of the he game. He also did do that. <laughs> yeah, it was but, uh, in his jungle <laughs> taking stuff away. Yeah, very much so. So uh, good on Sven there. A lot of that is about being able to uh, have the pressure in the lanes, get them back into the game after those few kills went over to Energy to start off the day. Two, two, and seven as Nidalee again scoreline. It's all right. It doesn't look fabulous, but that's more a product of the poor early game start yeah. from TSM. Putting pressure is all you need to do. Yeah, they had mid-control the whole time, though, despite what was going on in the bot lane. That was quickly turned around with that great counter gank that we saw. Which, to be fair, how many times is DVM going to get hit with Ash Arrow? Yeah, that happened like three or four <laughs> times. <laughs> Every day, man. Well, so now, so now let's talk about game two, because for energy, right, this, this game started about as well as it probably could have, and I think it's always... It's always scary when you have a great start in game one, lose it, right? And, and, and trying to assess how you could actually have won the game and really focus on that. You know, create the same early game advantages. Now how do we close it out instead of handing it back? I think the, the tough thing was that the Jacks never really got going. That TP play was good for him in a sense, but the fact that he never got to that point where he was just farming, the game didn't stall out. They tried to force that bot play right away. Mm -hmm. or not right away, it was probably more around like 10 minutes, but the, the fact it went bad, it got turned around, and then Jax from that point was behind, the rest of the team was pressuring the map. If they want to go with the counter pick top lane, I think they need to slow it down once they got the advantage. Well, I think it's a huge problem with the comp as well. If you're running a, a big split pusher like Jax, you won't have a lot of wave clear, easy, safe. You don't want to have Cassiopeia Ezreal. Like, this is the right. worst two chances you want to have for wave clear right now. Yeah, I don't really get the, the resurgence of Ezreal. Maybe we'll discuss that further down the line today. But TSM versus Energy will be right back after the break. So stick around to see if Doublelift will hit the 1,000 kill mark in Game 2. You're watching the North American LCS.